Yes. To the sounds of Duke Ellington. Yes. Come on. So we have a very special guest with us tonight to talk with me before we start the film. Actor, writer, director, Joa Lee is here. Yes. Joa was born in Brooklyn, New York, and has appeared in many Spike Lee films. They have a connection. <laughs> Including Do the Right Thing. Yeah. Yes. yes. Original screenwriter of the feature film Crooklyn, loosely based on her childhood growing up in 1970s Brooklyn. Her recent act acting credits include Amazon's Harlem. She also absolutely. She also appeared in Farewell Amour in 2020, directed by Ekwa Masangi. Her recent writing credits include two episodes of Netflix's She's Gotta Have It, for which she served as staff writer and story editor. Additionally, <coughs> Joa has written and directed short films, including Subway Vignettes, Part 1 and 2, and Snapped in 2001. Currently, Joa is working on a screenplay for an experimental narrative biography in time-based media. Her other time-based works include shorts Vitapoise and Untitled, soon to be shown at the Museum of Modern Art, MoMA, in New York, as part of its carte blanche <coughs> series. Her fellowships include Montalvo Lucas Arts Program, Artist in Residence, New York Foundation on the Arts Screenwriting, New York Urban Arts Initiative Screenwriting, and Yado Artist in Residence. She attended Brown University and we're so honored to have her with us tonight. Please join me in welcoming Joa Lee. Joa, hello. Hello. I just scooted my chair away. So, Paris Blues. Paris Blues. I know this is a film you appreciate a lot, and I wonder if you could just talk briefly about what is it about this film that you admire? Yeah, there's so much that I admire about the film. It was directed by Martin Ritt, and uh, just a wonderful director, and came from the work with the group theater. And um, there's it's a film to me that is a tribute to jazz. And I love that about the film because jazz is a character mm. of, in the film as well. And Duke Ellington uh, scored the film. It's underscored with his music and also Billy Strayhorn because it starts out with um, Take the A Train. And I love that it elevates jazz because we're not used to seeing jazz kind of on this level where it's it's revered by the the culture, the Parisian culture, by the people of all ages. And also, um, now I'm drawing a blank, oh my god. Um, no, that was a great way to start because you're absolutely right that the way that the film shows this reverence for jazz. Yes and the ways that so many, this diverse audience is just leaning into it and feeling it is really quite remarkable. That's exactly right. It's the, it's the popular music of the time and there's this reverence for, for, for this art form and the people in the clubs, they dance to it of all you know, varying ages, but also it's the, they are trained, when you look at their eyes, their eyes are trained on the performers on the stage. You don't hear that din that you hear, you know, in a lot of places where music is. It's just absolute silence and there's such, they're just kind of, there's such respect and awe and reverence for the music. And it's just, it's really beautifully, um, it's, it's really beautifully woven, in, uh, woven into it. Your father, Bill Lee, is a jazz musician and composer. He composed many of your brother Spike's films. And I wonder if you have any thoughts about how this film represents the, the life and the aspirations of jazz musicians, because an important part of the plot is the attempt to be taken seriously, the composition of jazz being taken seriously. That's such a good question. Um, this is what I also really like about the film. And 
I think this is the, um, the director's point of view, because as we learned, this was adapted from a novel and the character of Eddie the, is, is the protagonist in the book. So it's really about his life as an expat jazz musician, a black, black, the black jazz musician uh, in Paris. And But in the film, it focuses on Ram, who's uh, played by Paul Newman. So um, what was I going to say? I get so flustered. No, <laughs> this is great. It's great. Ooh. No. Wait, what was the question again? Just about the way that the, the experiences of jazz musicians is represented in the film. You got it. Yes. So this is really what I want. This is really what I want to say, is that it, without giving too much away, jazz is. My father would say jazz is the highest art form, mm. um, and that to me is what I see the point of view from the director in this, in the way it comes through the need that Ram has to be recognized as a white jazz musician by the black jazz. Jazz is black music. And for that need to be validated, and seen, and recognized by the black jazz musicians, it really, really states so much. He's really, I don't want to give away too much, but he is a, he's a <coughs> musician, but wants to compose. And is searching, want, wants that approval from the black jazz musicians. So that I've not I've not seen that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about another important component of the film, which is the, the set of romance plots that we have. So we have a white and a black jazz musician, and then a couple of American tourists come to town, uh, played by Joanne Woodward and Diane Carroll, um, and some romances ensue, and we can expect. <laughs> how these people line up in the film. <laughs> Although at the very beginning of the film, there's a moment where it seems like maybe the predictable thing won't happen and there might be interracial attraction and romance. And yet, it doesn't happen because of the times. And I'm just wondering if you could talk about that, that tension that we see. Yeah, we do see that tension uh, in the film. And I think, uh, you know, this, is, this film was made in, it was, it was shot on location in, in Paris. And I'm, I think there's some set stuff done as well, but there was a code also where you couldn't see interracial couples on the screen, among amongst other things that were prohibited in the, uh, in the film industry. So, but I, and again, I haven't read the novel, but I'm, I do want to read the novel now because I want to know, I'm sure the character of Eddie, who's portrayed in the film by Sidney Poitier, is with all kinds of women. So there's, you know, you know there's interracial, uh, romances throughout, I would assume, in the book. I think you're right. I think there is, and I haven't read it either, so. <laughs> but I think that there's a jazz club owner, a woman, and I think that Eddie in the novel has a relationship with yeah. her. Yeah, I mean, that's that's realistic. That is absolutely realistic. And um, I think the director, uh, Martin Ritt, gives a nod to it, as you'll see in the film. I'm not gonna give it away. It's kind of right at the top of the film. But there's kind of a nod to the whole attraction, flirtation, interracial flirtation. But I think that was as far as they could go. But I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's the director. I think that's the studio. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Poitier said, that, mm. that the studio, you know, cold feet is the term mm. that he gives. Yeah. 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 Did you meet Sidney Poitier or Diane Carroll? I wonder if you had any experiences with them or what you think about the way that we see them so early in their careers here. Just beautiful. I mean, they're just, they just exude such beauty and such a strong presence. And I mean, he's so tall and statuesque and Chief Diane Carroll is just beautiful. And I first saw Diane Carroll on TV when, in Julia, the TV show. Did the TV show. So, I was a kid, so that was, so my early, memories, my earliest memories are of seeing, so there was never a time that I don't, you know, hadn't seen a black person, black woman. And of course there's, I'm just, I'm just thinking about black female actors te on television that I saw, and of course I know Lieutenant O'Hara, Michelle Nichols was the, was the first. But I love, I love, love, love Diane Carroll. I loved her from the moment I saw her. And even identified with the little, her son, you know, because she was just, and she was also, her character was, she was not stereotypical, she was not a, a, a housekeeper, you know, she was not there to serve the, the lead character. <coughs> um, she was, 
she was uh, a professional. She was a nurse. So I just, I, I, I wish I had met her, but I have not. Uh, but I, I, and she won a Tony also. I think after this film, because she, she was in a Richard Rogers musical, I think that was written for her. And she played a model in Paris who has an affair with the white American novelist. So that's, that's the musical, so the interracial, so in, in plays, you know, in theater, they could explore that that interracial subject. Yes. And I never met Mr. Sidney Poitier either. Um, and I remember probably first seeing him because when I was growing up, you would see the same, they would show like the, uh, the ABC or afternoon movies. So I saw um, um, the musical, Corgi and Bess. Corgi and Bess. So that's when I probably first saw uh, Sidney Poitier. And then I was very disturbed by that as a child. Um, just that production or maybe the the world that the characters inhabited. But then seeing him in those seventies films that he directed and fucking the preacher and Uptown Saturday Night. Uptown Saturday Night. Mm -hmm. And and of course I'm probably to Sir with Love those films, the kind of more afternoon uh, you know um, features that I saw. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great to hear you talk about them through the lens of seeing them yes. as a child. And then, of course, Diane Carroll, I loved her in this in this movie, Claudine. She and yeah. James yeah. Carroll. Yeah. I, love, I love that film. Yeah. I love it. Um, so yeah, so I just, I love Diane Carroll. Yeah. She rests in peace. Yeah. Yeah. It's really wonderful to hear you. Yeah, both of them, yes. yes both of them. But to draw her out, because as a part of the B plot of this film, and then so often the woman in a situation like that is not the primary focus even in that relationship. But here you see that spark that she has that's so evident in the work that she did across her career. Yes, you do. You do see that spark. And I really love, I, characters are so well drawn because the film takes place at a time when, uh, you know, this is, this is the late 50s, early 60s, so there was, America was segregated, and um, she, well, obviously Sidney Poitier is an, an expat. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm centering myself from, from, <laughs> from giving too much away. Um, but the, you know, the narrative of their relationship is sort of negotiating being an expat versus being a black American in the struggle. <laughs> Um, and also as a black American artist, as there were Josephine Baker and James Baldwin and Richard Wright and Bud Powell, Lester Young, all, you know, there's so many for decades who found, could be themselves and could be free. And that is sort of, I think, who Sidney Poitier represents in this film. It's like the Joni Mitchell song, I was a free man in Paris, unfettered and alive. So that is sort of his character vis-a-vis -vis a black American woman who has not experienced that, who is new to town to that and can't understand why someone would not want to be home and yeah, and living that life. Beautifully put. Thank you, Joa. Thank you it? so much. You know, it says rap. <laughs> 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 we could go on, but first let's thank Joa. Oh,